Right, how's it everyone? Welcome to Term 2 Cat. We're going to start off with Module 2.1 Theory, which is internet and um, internet connections and services and things you can do online. We are going to be uh, following the textbook fairly closely, so you're welcome to use that, and then we're going to be looking at some other resources just after this. Uh, we'll skip through these slides fairly quickly, just because you have your books, and there's no reason you can't um, slow down the video if you need to, and there's other resources as well that I'll get to. So let's get let's get straight into it. We're going to be looking at ISPs and how they help and uh, what they do and what they let you do. Then we look at the different types of connections, how you do, uh, what you need, what are the advantages of each one um, of of say wired versus versus wireless, um, fixed versus mobile, and we're going to look a bit at, we're going to look at a bit of the nitty gritty of what you can actually do online, what we use the internet for. So these you need to know, you need to revise them, you need to see how they work and you need to know what their uh, what their advantages and disadvantages are. But let's get straight into it. So the first kind of starting point of the whole thing was what the internet actually is. So we know that the internet is the um, kind of interconnected network of information and hardware and uh, software that lets us um, perform all these services and uh, and use those resources. Um, and if you look at the sizes of these things, so the internet can actually be called a, a GAN, a global area network. So the GAN would be the global one. And then the second tier down would be, say, a WAN, a wide area network, which would be covering maybe an entire um, entire section of your country, maybe a massive city or part of a continent. And your smallest level is a LAN. So your school has a LAN, your home might have a LAN, and basically the internet's a whole bunch of interconnected LANs um, that just get larger and larger in size. Now. The first thing you need to connect to an internet, apart from the hardware that you know, you need a router and some device that can access the internet, like a phone or a tablet or a laptop or computer. You you need an ISP. So an ISP is an internet service provider, and they basically rent access to the internet. You pay them money, uh, sometimes pay as you go, sometimes monthly, and they give you the access to the internet. And you guys probably use some of these, um, Telcom OpenServe and uh, Vodacom MTN, um, Neotel, those are all ISPs and you need one of these before you can go online. What they give to you though, the ISP doesn't just give you access to the internet, they give you a whole bunch of stuff that we often forget about. So you mustn't forget about this stuff. We know that they give us the middle one there, wireless and wired internet access. But they give you other more important stuff too, like um, email. Um, so say at school, we all have an uh, email address that comes from the ISP. They let you host and upload um, documents to your web page, website. They then obviously give you access to the internet. They then let you have services like fax to email, which is where someone can fax you a document to a number and then the the document will arrive in your mailbox in a digital format and they also let you the, the ISP actually filters spam before it arrives at your mailbox which is great so you can read more into this but um, sometimes the ISPs will uh, you an email won't be arriving at your mailbox and it turns out that your friend who's actually trying to email it to you has been falsely flagged by the ISP as, as a spam address so you need to whitelist that address and that you will to do through your ISP as well. So the ISPs give you quite a lot of um, services just apart from access to the internet so you need to remember these other ones as well, don't forget about them. Alright, so there's a few things you need to that we'll now look at. Um, the first is, well, what is broadband? So broadband means that you've got this really um, high bandwidth, high speed connection. So high bandwidth means that a lot of data can flow past a single point at, at uh, in a set period of time. And obviously the higher bandwidth we have, the better for us because it lets us do things faster and lets us do more things at once. Now, when, you, when you're looking at, at the type of connection, you've got, you judge it by all these uh, different options. So we're going to go through them all at once. 
um, in the slides to follow. But basically, how mobile can you be on that line? Um, how fast is it? What? How does the cap? What is the cap versus uncapped thing? What is shaped or unshaped? And we also we'll talk a bit about throttling as well. Um, so let's get into it. the the first kind of connection you can get is a wired connection, which would be a connection that comes to your house or to your business. The old one would have been ADSL, which used to use the same line as your phone. But the modern ones that uh, have taken over ADSL would be your fiber, your fiber optic. And they send um, data through fiber optic cables that arrive at your house. And they have much higher bandwidth capacity than your old ADSL copper cables. Now, the way it used to work, and it, it still does, is you would pay your ISP, um, well, for your ADSL, you'd pay them like a line rental because um, you were basically renting a telephone line from them, whereas that would um, be a lot cheaper than using your 3G or your 4G these days, as you will know. Um, the problem with ADSL is that the further that you go away from the exchange, the place where your cables kind of meet the terminal, then the slower your internet will be. And the nice thing about the wired connection is that they're much more stable than a 3G or 4G um, connection, uh, which are sometimes affected by the weather. Now, fiber is also becoming a lot cheaper than maybe using mobile data. It's very fast. Um, it's cheaper. It does not get. It's not as valuable. It has no value. The glass fiber has no value, so it's it's not often stolen. Um, and also, it is not affected by electromagnetic interference, what we would call EMI, which is a lightning storm or maybe a uh, um, some other weather-related thing or like a, a sunspot or some other electrical fault. Um, your wireless also covers the whole um, breadth of your of your 3G, 4G, LTE, and as uh, coming soon, 5G as well, which is uh, accessing the internet without some kind of wire involved. Now, you would need to either have some kind of what we would call a dongle, a USB dongle in your laptop. Um, if it did not have, uh, if it did not have a, a SIM card inside it, so you need to have some kind of SIM card a little dongle with a little USB drive you'd plug a SIM card into to access the internet um, but you could always use your smartphone or your tablet or your laptop to connect to um, to a personal hotspot which uh, which you could use a friend's a friend's uh, cell phone to access the internet now the advantages of using the um, of using wireless connection is that you can move around you can wander around, you don't have to be at home, you can get in the car and go out and you can still have internet access. Um, you can go on holiday and still use the mobile phone and use your smartphone and tablet. But the problem is, if you travel through a place where there is not uh, cellular coverage, like you go through a desert or you go in a, in a valley or you go um, to somewhere remote, you will have poor signal. Um, and the other problem with that, which we often talk about in CAT, is that you cannot disconnect uh, socially which leads you to be anxious and it leads you to have information overload if you are always online, um, even on mobile data. Um, and the other thing with mobile, as you guys all know, is that you will very quickly use up all your data. So mobile can be very heavy on, on using data. You might have to, uh, to limit what you use. Then we, we make the mistake in CAT often of, uh, of confusing Wi-Fi and internet so people will often say, oh, I'm using the Wi-Fi at my house to mean that I'm using the internet. But Wi-Fi is just a, um, a wavelength of a signal that goes from your router to your cell phone or to your laptop or to your Xbox or whatever has Wi-Fi capability. So y your Wi-Fi will still work in your house, even though maybe the internet is broken. Um, so the uh, internet and Wi-Fi are different things. You need to go and... Um, if you think they're the same thing, you need to go and uh, just revise your textbook quickly. Um, now, what we would refer to a hotspot is somewhere um, like a restaurant or maybe a hotel. Um, or you can make a personal hotspot, but it's usually um, at a business um, where or a shopping mall where you would go to a, s a place with a fairly limited area 
where you can connect to their free um, free internet access, right? So you can go to Cresta and you can sit there at the food court and you can use their free internet. Um, or you could uh, get a fiber router at your house or the ADSL and then you could have your own Wi-Fi network at your house which uh, you know, most of us do have. You connect your phone to that. When you get home you can then uh, use your home internet and you don't have to rely on your mobile data anymore. Uh, you do need a password to connect to your router but once you've connected to it the first time your phone will remember, your device will remember that password. Uh, as we'll see in the next section though, when you do connect to pu public hotspots there are some safety precautions you need to take because those connections are often a bit insecure so they're a bit they, they, there are some uh, precautions you need to take. Um, when you're wandering around you will, your device also automatically um, looks and scans for Wi-Fi and will uh, will pick them up and ask if you want to log into it as you as you wander around.